Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. Today's episode will be a garden planter tutorial. Now I've made these garden planters last year and I made about eight or nine of them and what I thought was going to be a really great project to take up some area where I had nothing but concrete it turned out that they weren't that successful last year so why the heck am I doing this video still well we realized that it was actually bad soil so now after I've run a couple other tests and came up with some new mixes some new stuff that I've tried out and it seems to be working great my spinach is very very happy there The boxes actually were a win for us. Last year, the boxes cost me about $13 per box, but this year the boxes were priced out at about $17 each before the screw cost. Now, what you need to know is that lumber is actually market value. It's kind of like buying seafood. And so right now here in California, to make one of these boxes, it's roughly gonna cost you about $17 for the lumber itself. And just go through the materials that we'll be using to create this planter box. First thing is four of these pickets, and they are five and a half inches wide. They are made out of cedar, which means they are going to be great for the outdoors. The next thing I have is a two by two post. This is an eight foot long two by two post. It's usually found with the furring strips, the cheap grade, but isn't going to be as weather permitting as long lasting as the cedar. However, it is a very thick post and I've been using such a small amount of it that it's going to take a long time before something like this would break down. If you would like to spend the extra, you can go ahead and get something that is made out of cedar. And then I have a one by three furring strip, a one by three furring strip. And then I have my one by two, also a furring strip and a box of screws and that is it. Okay, the first thing you are going to do to create this planter box is to cut up all of your pieces. I'm going to walk you through a way to cut up the lumber in the most effective way so that you can get the most out of your wood. So most of these staples will come off with a flathead screwdriver but I did take a cheapy flathead screwdriver that I got from the 99 cent store and I ground down the tip to how I have a little bit of a finer point that I mainly use for things like this. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to cut 36 inches off of each end and I'm gonna be cutting them off of the flat end. I really don't wanna keep the angled top. I want to take my 36 inch measurement from each end of here first and once I have that 36 off of all four of these, then I'm going to take you through the next measurement of the remaining pieces. Alright, now that I have my four pieces, I'm going to take two of those remaining cutoffs and I'm going to measure two at, at 34 and 3 quarter. Right, and now I need four pieces at 17 inches, so I should be able to get two pieces out of each remaining, so I end up with four total. Alright, all of my cedar is done, and the next cut I'm going to make is going to be on that 1x3. I only need a small portion of this 1x3, so I'm not going to bother pulling the staple off. I'm just going to make sure I cut the end that doesn't have the staple. This may not be a choice for you because sometimes those furring strips are really gross, but just know you're only using 34 and 3 quarter inches of this as well. And so if you have one, if you found one that's like pretty much close to being good, and you, you know, it just has a jacked up small end, you can just end up getting that one because you're going to be cutting off the majority of it. However, if you are going to be making more than one, then you can get two pieces out of this for two boxes. So that's going to get cut at 34 and 3 quarters. And while I'm going over there with that piece of wood, I'm also going to take my 1 by 2 with me and I am going to cut that 1 by 2 Whoa! I am going to cut that one by two at 31 and 7 eighths. I am going to be needing two pieces, but I never want to go and measure both pieces at once 
because I am going to lose about an eighth of an inch from my sawtooth. So it's always best to do one measurement at a time, chop that piece and then remeasure for the second piece. And the very last bit I need to cut is that two by two, and these are actually my legs. So I'm cutting these at 12 inches, but you could go as to 18, you know, if you decided you want to add an extra layer of the cedar, so you could go even higher than that. I have some that I cut for potato boxes that are about 24 inches in height, and those are definitely deeper. I added three boards, because potatoes need kind of a, a big well of things, and you just keep piling dirt on top of them. You want to keep in mind that this is eight feet long, so if you only want to stick to using one board, the most you're going to be able to cut them to is just under two feet. So for the sake of this box, I am only going to cut them at 12 inches in height. Just gonna check off all of my materials and make sure that I have everything I need before I begin the assemble. First thing I'm gonna do is take two of my legs and two of my 17 inch pieces and I'm gonna assemble the sides first. Should be good there. I am just gonna put two holes in each one of these on each side and I am just using my favorite Wolfcraft countersink bit that pilots the hole and has the a little bit of a bore at the end of the tip to create for the screw head to go down. For this type of rustic project this is probably not necessary. I just have gotten really used to using them and I'm a little bit spoiled. I like using them. So it makes life a lot easier. If you don't have one, because like I said, this is meant to be outdoors and kind of rustic, you just could use a regular sander drill bit to pilot your hole and then sink the screw in after that. Your screw head won't go below the surface, but again, if it's rustic, it doesn't really matter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the second side, which should be exactly like this first side. The next thing I'm gonna do is put on the long sides. Each one of these has ended up with about an inch extra of space on the end, and that's where basically I'm calling them feet, is what they end up being after you put on the bottom of this container. You need to have some kind of space. You don't wanna plop this down directly on the ground. This little bit of elevated space will help for drainage. So I just wanna make sure that before I attach the next side, that both of the overages are facing in the same way and that all of the ends that are keeping flush are facing towards me so that I can go ahead and put the next piece on. This edge now is flush with the leg. So I'm ready to go ahead and screw this part down, and then I can do the other side. I'm going to flip this over and repeat that for the other side. You want to flip it down so that the bottom is actually facing up. The next thing is to take those one by twos and put a couple screws in from the side just to hold these in place. I'm not measuring any of these screw placements, I'm just eyeballing. If you want to be that person who sits there and measures, go for it. Um, in projects like this, I try to let myself relax a little bit so that I'm not, because you know, there's so many other things that I make that have to be so precise. This is not one of those things, and that's kind of why I enjoy doing these types of projects. Well, come on. This isn't productive. We're supposed to be making this planter box. I was just testing the spacing to make sure these should fit inside nicely and they do. I think the next part's going to be easier if you turn it on its side and so we are here. This is that 34 and 3 quarters. There should be a slight gap in between them. The gap is so that we can get some drainage in there. They, they actually ended up being almost 
a little too much. So if you would like to add an extra layer of protection on some of my boxes, I did line it with some landscaping cloth. So that is an option. I'm gonna go ahead and get this first piece screwed in. I'm going to take a couple extra screws, prop them in. You wanna come back up? Well, why'd you jump down? She is a little afraid to jump onto things, but she wants to be part of the party. So sometimes I have to just pick her up. There you go, hi. Oh, <laughs> what you doing? All right, in that center, I have that same issue. So because this is wet wood, it's wet fencing, it's not always straight. And even though your cuts can be perfect, you know, you're working with a material that's kind of always moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit off of this one again. It was just slightly snug, so this should have done it. I just took off about an eighth of an inch. We are almost done. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in those two pieces. I'm gonna measure for those. Anywhere between 16 inches or 16 and a half and 17. I just need two scrap pieces of wood. It could be made out of anything. I am just going to use my leftover piece of the one by two and I will just cut that in half, which should be about 16 inches. That should give me enough to get in there and secure it down. I'm gonna avoid that giant knot and then I'll just be screwing these two pieces in, one here and one up there somewhere. For these pieces, I am not going to allow my powder sink bit to plow all the way through because the thickness of the, these two pieces are gonna be just at my one and a quarter inches. Now I only need to get a screw in each one of these boards to lock everything together. Okay, so just a couple things. The final screw tally came to 58 screws. This thing has 238 screws, so you should be able to get four boxes out of that one box that I purchased for $6 which brings the screw total to $1.50 per planter. So you add that to my initial $17, so you're looking at $18.50 for a planter that has 4.5 cubic feet of space. If you are practicing the square foot gardening method, this is just slightly over because it is 18 inches in width. Trying the square foot garden method where they needed just slightly a little bit more than that 12 inches. And so having that 18 provided that just that little bit of extra. And so for larger plants that were okay to plant in one square foot, it just really helped those along. So if you're doing, you know, something larger like your tomatoes, you should be able to get three of them in here. I was able to plant out 11 spinach plants in the planter that I showed you guys earlier. It took about just under two hours to do, but keep in mind that was with me having to, you know, keep setting up and moving around the camera. If you get your groove going, you could probably crank out, you know, several of these in an afternoon and you can have a ready to go garden. Well, that is basically all I have for you today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe and tell your friends. See you here soon. Oh, don't kill my babies. Oh my goodness, we gotta work.